Hey everybody, I'm Chuck Duran. And I'm Stacy J. Welcome to another awesome episode of VO Buzz Weekly. Today we are all about part two with Joe Cipriano. So let's get to it. Let's go. We were sitting here uh, having a little chat with Joe yeah. and uh, we got a little story out of him that uh, <laughs> we want he didn't to told us. He, right, he had he was going to leave it out. He's holding but out. It's not going to happen. Is there, tell us a story about the Fox promo thing. Oh, right. Okay. Starting at Fox. Yes. yes. I uh, had been employing that tactic of sending out my demos and, yes. you know, calling. And, and the Fox network had uh, come on the air in 87. Mm -hmm. And they had put out a kind of a search, you mm -hmm. know. And I had, I had an agent at the time. I was trying to get in, get in on it, and to no avail. And I happened to be working at KISS FM here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And I was doing fill-in and things like that. I was also their image voice, you know, for mm -hmm. their promos and mm -hmm. things like that. And uh, very early on in my career. And um, I uh, happened to be on the air filling in for Big Ron O'Brien in the afternoon on KISS Big FM. Ron. Big Ron. And uh, just doing the shift. And um, it just so happened that day that the head of marketing for this brand new network called Fox mm. was driving home to Simi Valley and it was that's a long drive long drive <laughs> for those of you that are not in California that that's a, a long, long drive. drive so it was me and him in the car pretty much he's wow. listening to Kiss FM yeah and you know I think obviously he got bored no uh, you know he said <laughs> you know that's an interesting voice that they had been something. they just hadn't found the image the sound they mm -hmm. had the look of what they wanted but they hadn't found the the sound they were really trying to become a fourth network yeah. and so that they was... wanted to they took everything that networks did and flipped it upside down mm -hmm. we're going to do everything completely opposite and that's why shows like the simpsons came on and you know yeah. just who would Nobody would ever put The Simpsons on the air, no. you know. Good Nobody, choice there, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would ever put me on the air as a promo, uh, you know, announcer for a network. At that time, it was Ernie Anderson and all of mm -hmm. that, those big voices. But he said, you know what? Uh, later he had told me, you sounded like you were a college kid and that you were just excited and, and happy about what you were doing. And that was what we wanted to bring to yeah. Fox because that was our viewer. So... He heard me on the way home, and he called from his car phone, which probably was three times the size of this. In a, a bag. One of those, yeah. one of those bricks, a... you know. <laughs> he called Kiss and said, who is that on the air? And they said, that's Joe Cipriano. And how do I get, does he have an agent? And called my agent. They brought me in. Uh, there was, they were using a voice. That uh, actor had gone on vacation for two weeks. Yeah. Oh. So over those two weeks, they brought me in to try a few different things. They were using other announcers. And over the course of those two weeks, I ended up getting the gig. Wow. I know the guy who who had it, and he don't knew go that on vacation, he people. knew that's why we don't go on vacation. <laughs> he knew you. that it, you know, Unless it was. Unless you take your home studio <laughs> travel right. kit. Right, that's why we do that. But yeah, yeah uh, and, and uh, I, that was in 1988, and here we are in 2012, and it's uh, it's still. You Did know, you know, I mean, when they brought you in there and you're in there, you know, basically on trial, I mean, what did you get? Did you have that feeling oh. that like this is it? Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, I, I not only knew it, it was like this has to be it. You know, I am going to do everything humanly possible to make mm -hmm. this it. But I was so thrilled to be because coming from radio, uh, you talk up songs, yeah. you yeah. know, and on the 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 well now it's you know digital uh, but on the tape it would say you have 13 seconds to talk well you hit the thing and you go uh, kiss fm 102.7 it'll be sunny today and a high of 63 degrees and you soul clock it in your head you feel like okay that's uh -huh. about tw 10 seconds 11 12 13 on kiss fm and then the vocal comes in mm -hmm. so promo is exactly that yeah it you're just reading to the picture there are three yeah. beeps at the top on the imaginary so, fourth beep beep, beep. Sunday, it's an all-new Simpsons on Fox. Then. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, you're talking up mini intros yeah. along the way because, as you guys know, the promo is already cut. When you're talking about network, it's, it's cut, it's done. You have your script. You have what the sound on tape is. Mm -hmm. You're interweaving. You're going in and out in between all mm -hmm. the sound on tape. And each time you have 2.2 seconds to talk, 4.6 seconds to talk, you know, 3.2 seconds. And you just do it. Yeah. And the guys that do it, like Don, Don, and, and thankfully I have that kind of timing as well, you do it once, and you might miss a couple of them, but 
by the second time you do it, you got it. There's a you story know dynamic. that I got to go yeah. like three frames longer on on the first line, right, and right. that third line has to be about five sa- frames shorter. But you know? don't you think? I mean, I just it seems since high school you've been you had been preparing for that moment. Yeah, I guess so. That's which true. it just seems like it was. Mm. It wasn't like oh, you're just on the radio. It I was mean, this kismet. Was, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, I don't particularly believe in accidents in life. I think that you you made an appointment to be there at that time, and you were ready. Yeah, and, 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 and as we we mentioned before, it's luck. But you know, luck and opportunity have to have, to, have to meet. Yeah. And and then the the third thing is the ability. So yeah. you have to have all of that: the mm-hmm. opportunity, the luck, and then also the ability to do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe if Fox had uh, or another network had called me in three years earlier, I would wouldn't be ready right mm-hmm. and uh, it wouldn't have happened so but. I mean in that vein <laughs> if there's somebody who's aspiring to promos who's maybe already in it or or looking to get in it what do you think are the must-haves for someone that's to be competitive question. that is a, like uh, that's that. that's Thank very you. good um, boy you know promo is such an interesting um, kind of field um, obviously timing I- is very important mm-hmm. you know because uh, I've always said that there are are a lot of actors out there that have much better voices uh, than I have, but maybe I don't they're know about that. <laughs> but maybe they're lacking the timing. You know, when you try to rush uh, a great actor, mm-hmm. you know they're they're emoting and they're they're doing their thing, and it's like, yeah, that's really good, but I need you to do that in like three seconds, yeah. and can you do that? And they're not able to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so timing is very important, uh, and part of that is when you're talking, uh, you know, in between two sound bites, and you know you have to quicken it up. It, it's something that you have to do over the entire body of that whatever that line is. Right. You can't just quicken up the last three words. No. You know, you have yeah. to learn how to time compress yourself. Mm-hmm. The other thing is uh, it's all about the copy and interpreting the copy. Mm-hmm. And I've always been lucky in that uh, I've worked in comedies, most of it. I love comedies. Mm-hmm. And I thoroughly enjoy the shows that I do. And during the SOTs, while I'm reading that promo, I'm actually kind of giggling and laughing, you know, at the jokes and, yeah. and truly enjoying it. So I think bringing um, that real sense of, wow, this is something that I really enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. If you really enjoy doing something, it's going to print. It's going to come through. Well, and you did drama for NBC. And do you prefer comedy over drama? Or is it just, I mean, it's... It's funny. Don, going back to Don, when, when I started doing the drama work at NBC, which was so not anything that I had ever done before, even my agents on the East and West Coast, they were like, you're kidding me. You want to do what? <laughs> Did you, is that the right client? Joseph yeah. Uh, it, it was, Don uh, said to me, he said, you know, it, it's interesting. This is your, your real voice. You, when you do comedy and you do it well, but you work to do comedy and you're really up and you're yeah. pushing mm-hmm. and you're, mm-hmm. and it, it's a lot yeah. of work. It's I can see that it's work. Level. Yeah. Yeah. He said, it just resides in you. It, it, it's the drama voice that you're using is more you. And I never thought of that before. So, what's your drama voice? <laughs> well, let's see. We're uh, it would Joe be. We're putting on the spot right now. Yes. Wait, would you have to beep? <laughs> yes, let's do, do the, the beep. Beeps, Chuck. Beep, beep. Monday on an all new Heroes. <laughs> you know, it's a that's good. Yeah. it's a thing where it's all diaphragm yeah, yeah, yeah. and, yeah, and it's all proximity it. to mm-hmm. the mic. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Nice and and um, yeah, uh, I loved that when, when I, it was George DeLoyo who told me that NBC was looking for a drama voice. And I thought, huh. I started working on a demo mm-hmm. at home in my home studio. Mm-hmm. And uh, and um, started putting st- some stuff together. I was just pulling copy off the internet. And I called, my daughter was upstairs at the time. She was in high school. And uh, I said, what's a real cool song right now? Like the hippest song going. And she told me, you know, what it was. And I said, all right, I downloaded it on iTunes. And let I used be that. Let <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could remember the name of it. I can't. Uh, and, and so it was a very current sounding demo because right. of that. Mm-hmm. It was the hottest song going right now. Mm-hmm. And I presented it to Rita Venari, my agent. And Sorry, Rita. And she <laughs> said, uh, I said, you know, I really want to go after this drama gig at NBC. Yeah. And she said, oh, what? <laughs> Drama? That's the action. You? That's the, that's the uh, yeah. reaction you want to get from your agent. <laughs> right from yeah, your right? agent. Well, you're really? Really? And I said, well, you. well, you know, take a listen. And then, and she went, wow, that's really very good. And I yeah. said, well, what do you think? Well, should we? They gave me some pointers on uh, maybe moving a few things around, mm-hmm. starting here, doing that. 
and we presented it to uh, to NBC, and and they bought it. They bought wow. it. Fig, yeah. yeah. How do you keep yourself motivated and current, and, and especially, I mean, if you kind of think about from the time you were starting and it was slow and it's ramping up, but even to this point. Mm-hmm. How does it stay fresh for you? And yeah, uh, well, I love it so much. Mm-hmm. You know what I do, and you know how, what a great gig it is. I mean, yeah. it's, it's unbelievable. Everybody wants to do it, um, but I've always believed that you have to keep reinventing yourself. You can't rely on what you did mm-hmm. two years ago or ten years ago. Um, you have to stay current. Uh, I, I really keep up on on what's going on, what's happening. Mm-hmm. I'm a, a a student of what I. Do, I do a lot of, uh, obviously, promo work, which I'm very fortunate to do. I also do a lot of live announcing work for shows like the Emmys and the Grammys mm-hmm. and things like that. Mm-hmm. And it, it's a matter of, in all the things that you're interested in, in it, it just be a student of it and find out what's working, why, why has it changed? And it is changing constantly. Mm-hmm. Promo has gone through such a huge change since I got into it, uh, several times over. And right. It's a matter of keeping up with it, understanding what the changes are and why they happen, and um, just keeping up. And, yeah. and that's what, that's I, what cool. I try to do. You know? That's awesome. And I'm, yeah. I'm also big on, you can't rely on your agent to get you work. Uh, that, that doesn't happen. I mean, there are, work begets work. Right. It's something yeah. my buddy George sure. Deloyo has said uh, many times, and I love that. I mean, once you start working, uh, somebody will say, hey, I want that guy. Have you heard mm-hmm. the guy that does Heroes on NBC? Mm-hmm. He would be really cool for this, you right. know. Yeah. And so work does beget work, but you have to find your own work. And that is by, I read trades. I uh, do that every morning. Mm-hmm. I look for things that, I, I look at what new shows are coming up, what um, shows are going into pilot, what's being yeah. bought. Mm-hmm. What's going into syndication? You know, a lot of the syndication shows that they announce, they're announcing a year and a half ahead. You know, something they announce now in 2012 won't won't really hit air, yeah. like like an Ellen talk show, yeah. till uh, s- uh, September of 2014. Mm-hmm. So, you know, following that and learning what the production company is and who I can get my agent to submit a tape yeah. to, I'm really big on that. You you told us earlier a little story about Wheel of Fortune. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Which I thought was really cool. Yes. Uh, and, and you know what? That was something I actually learned on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, somebody, I, I, this has happened a couple of times to me now. Somebody had written. And just really quick, this is a great example <laughs> of just kind of taking charge. Don't mm-hmm. leave everything up to your agent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a- exactly. You're not their only client. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. That, that's so true, you know. And, uh, and your agent will appreciate it. If you're yes. looking for things that you're right for, um, you know, they want to make money. Sure. They want you to work. Your agent wants you to work. Right. I had happened to read that um, they were, um, somebody was doing fill-in on Wheel of Fortune because the announcer had sadly passed away and they needed to make a decision. I had no idea. That completely passed me by. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know that they were starting to bring in announcers. And I called my agent right away and I said, hey, do you guys know that they're looking for an announcer for Wheel of Fortune. They were like, no. And I, I copied the thing. I sent mm-hmm. it to them. I found out who the executive producer is, and I sent that to them. And they made a call, and then boom, suddenly, I'm doing Wheel of Fortune. That's so cool. I'm on, cool I'm on the that? set with Pat and Vanna. Oh, you know? that is insane. You're buying and vowels. It was <laughs> such a cool, I, I, it was just so fun. I went in and, and read with the director. And they kind of vetted, that was the process, and they bring mm-hmm. in some, yep. some folks and read, and a lot of people didn't make it past that. And then they, you know, they called Rita and said, you know, we like Joe, we want to have him come in and do a couple of weeks. And I was yeah. like, That's yeah, so yeah. Cool, man. how cool is that? That is insanely cool. I didn't cool. get the gig, but it <laughs> sure was fun. Did That's you get cool. to spin the big wheel? I did, I, <laughs> and I have a picture, two pictures oh! of me, Vanna, and <laughs> Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if I get in the I middle of you guys, you yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, uh, I was going to say something. I totally forgot. I think it was well, it's the whole idea of oh, you no, being no, no, Pat no, no. Sajak. No, no, check this out. Yeah. Um, okay, so Joe has a clubhouse. Okay. Yes. And be- <laughs> he's, he's not, yeah, he's not going to tell us that. But he does. Let's put it. It's his second home. He does a lot of his work from there, mm. and he was cool enough to actually let us come and do a Vo Buzz Weekly Clubhouse invasion. Yes. Invasion. So we're going to go check that out. Right. That's right. Welcome to my clubhouse.
right, I'm gonna have this one go a little further this time. I feel it. Here we go. Eric, uh, grab the golf cart. See if you can retrieve that. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Oh, Theo Buzz Weekly. Listen, come on in. I'm glad you guys are here. It's time for the clubhouse invasion. That was kind of fun, wasn't it? And now, welcome to the clubhouse. Come on in. I'm glad to have you guys here. And uh, uh, so this is it. This is the space that uh, is a guest house. Uh, when we bought the house a few years ago, we did a remodel on the house. And I was really excited about redoing this guest house and turning it into the clubhouse. And uh, I wanted it to be comfortable. Uh, I wanted to have a space where uh, I, I would be comfortable and friends would be comfortable as well. Also people that I work with. Uh, to come here and hang out. I uh, do a lot of work in here uh, by myself, obviously, and ISDN in the studio, but I've also had producers come here and direct me, and because of that, I have speakers here in the clubhouse side. When I'm closed up into the um, studio itself, they're able to hear me and direct me, and it's just kind of fun. I've done some radio broadcasts here with friends that have done their shows from here on Westwood One, Jim Bohannon Show, and a few other things. So the idea was to have something, you know, really comfortable, um, you can see over there, I just took a whole bunch of my passes from the Emmy Awards and uh, Grammy Awards and things like that and put them all together. Um, the desk, you know, I just kind of do my email and, and things like that here. I have a bunch of pictures that mean a lot to me. You know, people like Don LaFontaine. We did the Primetime Voices uh, campaign where we raised money for Mattel Children's Hospital at UCLA. We just did that this past uh, Christmas. And, um, I don't know, just a, uh, you know, I'm big into tennis and uh, I've got my Wimbledon uh, watercolor up there. A uh, picture from uh, Deal or No Deal, the cover of the Hollywood Reporter when we hit 100 episodes. I can't even tell you how many episodes we really did of that show by the end of it into syndication, but it was really, uh, really a kick. I like to collect radios and microphones. I'm a big fan of uh, Bing Crosby. And this came from a friend of mine uh, Susan Moore, who um, is a VP over at Fox. Uh, I always liked Bing Crosby because he's just this guy that made a living uh, using his voice, um, but he was a real casual sort of guy and a fun sort of guy. A sportsman of sorts, you know. And uh, my favorite uh, leather chair uh, over here, Fire in the Fireplace, which is always fun. You know, flat screen TV, usually golf or tennis is on the TV during the day. And now, the booth. So. When I decided that I was going to do a booth, I didn't want to be in this small space. I wanted to have something that was roomy uh, because I'm going to be spending a lot of time in here. So uh, I went to George Whittem, uh, who helped me design the actual booth and how to soundproof it and all the materials that I would need to do that. And he was great. The actual design of the cabinetry and how the equipment would go was something that I did. I mean, I, I love doing that. Um, at first, I kind of had this idea that I'd have all the outboard gear up here, but I thought it looked cooler. It's like, um, you know, you're in a cockpit of a, of a plane or the Starship Enterprise or something like that. And, uh, and this board, a lot of people say that it's a kind of like space age kind of thing. Um, so everything is within reach when I'm on microphone. This is my 416. Uh, I have a phone patch. People can direct me uh, by phone line or on the ISDNs. I have two of those. A lot of redundancy. I have two of everything. And uh, that's just in case, you know, something goes down, you know, you gotta get the, uh, the session done. And um, so let's see here. Actually, it's about 11.30 right now. I have a 12 o'clock coming up for Extreme Makeover Home Edition. Uh, I'm the in-show announcer. A uh, previous uh, VO Buzz interviewee, Scott Rummel, is actually the promo voice of Extreme Makeover, and I'm the intro voice, so we kind of double teamed them, uh, which is always fun. And I do have a script that just came in uh, for the Netherlands. It's for a game show. So uh, I need to crank that out before uh, the 12 o'clock, and so I better jump into that. So I want to thank you for coming, but uh, how can I say this? Tally ho. Thanks very much, though. I'll see you guys later. Wow, was that cool or <laughs> that what? Was, oh, that was very, I want to live there. <laughs> I want, <laughs>
<laughs> Holy Toledo. I'm so glad that you guys came over. By the way, I'm missing some silver. Oh. Hmm. Don't look at me. Hmm. Okay. But uh, that mic looked kind of good, man. I was thinking, I was like, hmm, maybe he would never know it's gone. <laughs> You know, it's not it's not like working when when you hang there. That's it's really it's very cool. That's yeah. really so thanks for thank coming over. For, yeah, yeah. yeah, thank good. you for that. I hope insight. you guys liked it. Yeah. I hope you guys liked it. <laughs> what are some guiding principles that you maintain to this day mm -hmm. to keep you in this at this level? Uh, your well, career? you know, I uh, uh, truth, uh, uh, and I always taught my kids that that mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, truth is always a good way to go. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you yeah. know, because. Uh, if you start trying to um, make things up and and be somebody that you're not, you're gonna you're gonna trip up. And you're gonna mm -hmm. trip yourself up because you can't keep that up. So, uh, staying very true to yourself and being who you are, I think, is is really important. And uh, I just love uh, what I do. And how many people have sat in this chair with you guys? And and they've probably said, I'm the luckiest person in the world because mm. we get to do what we do. Yeah. It's, it is sometimes you, it's like, really? Yeah. This is amazing. Yeah. And uh, I, I, I truly want uh, uh, more people to experience it. You know, somebody was asking me at the SAG Foundation the other night, you know, why do you do this? Why do you, you know, get involved with building the lab? Don't you feel that you're bringing in people that are going to take work away mm. from you? And I never think of that. Um, there is so much. First of all, there's no chance of that. <laughs> but second no, of all, but you have a, such a, sp a spirit of gratitude yeah. about you. It's, which a, it's all about giving you're back. You're going to be continually blessed because you give back. If and you, that, and you if, don't take if it If I give back, yourself. you give back. And the people that we bring in give back. Yeah. It just keeps Absolutely. going. Yeah. And it's all, it's all good stuff. You and know? I think that's a, a, a statement about the voice of our community in general. It's very much like a family. That, it's so true. When we built the lab and we started to go out looking for do donations, the staff at the foundation said, never before have mm -hmm. they ever seen anything like this in all of their other endeavors in the acting community the way the voiceover community comes together and supports is yeah. unbelievable yeah. unbelievable right i don't know what that is actors don't share <laughs> <laughs> uh, what does the next chapter in joe's life look like mm. The next chapter in joe's the next life chapter in his, your life have you started writing that yet or <laughs> well, <laughs> I haven't started writing that yet. Um, gosh, uh, you know, for me, uh, I'm at a point now where if I can keep the work going, mm -hmm. uh, which, it, believe me, is a, is a full-time job. We've, mm -hmm. we've talked about that here. You just can't sit back and think that you're going to get a text that you have a, a job the next day. Right. You know, Friday, and I've said this I many times. I just have times. to say you've gotten like four of those, <laughs> by the way. Joe's working all day tomorrow, if anyone wants to know. Yeah. Okay. He's not available. The, yeah. the best thing that can happen is on Friday, you get a booking for Monday. Yes. That makes the weekend a lot better, yeah. you know. But yeah, I, I think that if I can uh, keep my career going, um, I, I think it's for me now, it's a, it's about giving back as much as I can. And mm -hmm. I learned that from Don LaFontaine. He uh, always embodied that. And I think it's, you know, it's good for your heart. It's good for your soul. It's, yeah. it's just, it's just good. Yeah. And so I think that's what I'm all about right now is uh, keep it going, you know, and give back and, um, and enjoy and enjoy life, and I do. I totally enjoy it. Well, That's you're good at what time. you do, and you're good at giving back. So Absolutely. thank you Thanks so much. That. Well, um, I love what you guys are doing. This show is awesome. It's it's an idea you. that is brilliant, and thank goodness you came up with. It. I think the timing is perfect. We're all ready for this. Yeah, and it's so fun. You it know, is fun. It's, it's, we're at, it's fun for it's, us. As much fun <laughs> it is to be blast. here, sitting here. Uh, being where you guys are. That's and, awesome. And well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Thank man. you. We appreciate it. Thank you for coming down and joining us. Pleasure. All right. We Drive so safely to your, your session. Time, thank you. We're <laughs> off. All right, Joe. <laughs> yeah! Sunday, it's an all new Simpsons. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm Joe Cipriano, and uh, when I'm not saying things like, Monday, it's an all-new Two and a Half Men, CBS Monday, or Sunday, it's an all-new Simpsons on Fox, or tonight, on Deal or No Deal, one person has the shot to win one million dollars. When I'm not doing that, I'm watching VO Buzz Weekly. It happens every week, it's brand new, it's for you, and Stacy and Chuck are just awesome. So tune in, VO Buzz Weekly, every week, right here.
Well, that's all we have for today, everybody. Be sure and tune in next week for another awesome episode of VO Buzz Weekly. And make sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at VO Buzz Weekly. You guys take care until next week. And just remember, you, you always, always have time, time for a little buzz. buzz.